G'day guys, I'm Raganak. I got an invite to the New World Beta, and I still have a beta key available to give away for anyone interested in that. All you gotta do is like, comment, and make sure you subscribe to the channel, and comment why you uh, want to play this game, what, what appeals to you. So this video I'm gonna basically show you uh, what New World is all about, what the gameplay looks like, what features there are, what the graphics look like, what, what is there to do in the game essentially, how is this different from other MMORPGs? For... Now for those who don't know, this is an MMO developed by Amazon, and uh, yeah, it's their first MMO game that I know of actually, and uh, so far I've been pretty impressed with it. The uh, combat's very interesting, as you can see we've got light attacks and heavy attacks by holding, and we've got block by right clicking or left triggering I'm assuming on the console. And you can dodge as well, so it's very similar to Witcher 3 combat from what I've found so far. And that goes for uh, the leveling up system. Now you've got several different weapons as you can see here. You've got swords, you've got spears, you've got bows, you've got staves, you've got gauntlets, you've got all these things. And they all have their own talent tree systems. And these naturally level up as you use these weapons. Which is really, really nice. So, if you have a favorite weapon or you get a new weapon, try it out because it's actually really cool. All of them have completely different play styles and feel very different. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of players around in the beta and the world feels very alive. And when a player gets a certain distance from you, they don't actually vanish like they do in a game like WoW. There's still, you can still see them running around in the distance, which makes it feel really cool. So, they don't just. There's, the world looks like it's always alive, there's always creatures moving around in, in the silhouettes, there's always random players and NPCs running around in the distance, nothing zones out after 20 feet, which is really nice. Now the skill system's a bit interesting, as you level up you can put skills in strength or dexterity or health or intelligence, whatnot. And you can reset these as many times as you want uh, until you're level 20. And then once you're level 20 or higher, that's when it starts costing gold or the currency in the game. So the reason why this is good is as you get various weapons as in your first 20 levels, you can switch them around, try them out, level them up, and you can respec your stats as many times as you want uh, to suit each weapon type. And that way you get a nice idea of uh, what weapon you like the most, and then you can choose to specialize in that weapon, like a bow or a staff or whatnot. Now campfires in this game is where you do cooking, but you can also craft a few survival tools, like your mining pick or your skinning knife, for example, so you can gather more resources. And gathering resources is a huge thing in this game, so this game is very crafting oriented, which is really cool. I like the idea of having to like go out and gather things and cook your own food uh, to get your health back, for example, and, and it does give you buffs as well. Uh, but also you can make your own swords and armor eventually, and that's like the way you get the majority of it in the game. Like you can get drops and whatnot, but the crafted gear is actually really powerful, so you're encouraged to craft your own gear, which I think is really cool. Now as you can see as I'm skinning this boar here, you know, it takes a bit of time, but as I skin it and complete the skin, uh, you can see I get some skinning XP and tracking XP, and the more that levels up, the faster your skinning becomes, and the more materials that you can get from skinning, and the more rare materials you can get too. So everything's got like a little leveling system. So whatever you enjoy the most, you can specialize in that if you if you wish. So your player can become quite unique, and eventually you'll have those completionists completing everything. Now as you can hear in the background, all the quests are voice acted. All the dialogue actually has a voice actor. And you can have your own little dialogue there that you click, however that's not voice acted, so that's just you role playing basically. Now the voice acting is actually pretty good, um, you know, the NPCs, they don't just rush the dialogue, they actually sound like they're genuinely having a conversation with you. And uh, it just makes the world feel a lot more immersive, knowing that there's voice acted NPCs talking to you rather than just the random box of text appearing. Now here you can see me using various different weapons, you can run around with a big war hammer or you can switch to a staff, and notice I can simply respec my stats so I can, you know, use my staff instead of a sword and invest in magic or focus. And then I can use my staff and make my staff hit harder and do more damage. 
Now, because the combat's more action RPG based, you actually have to aim where your shots go. It's the same for the bow and any other ranged weapon. So, you, if you prefer the tab targeting style, you might not enjoy this so much, but if you prefer the action RPG, like Witcher 3, for example, uh, you'll love this game. This The combat is very fun, it's more engaging. Uh, it's, you know, mechanics like aiming and dodging and timing are all important, so yeah, it's, it's very much a skill-based game as well as a stat-based game. It's got like a nice mix of the two interweaved into together. And even mechanics like backstabbing are in the game as well, breaking shields, things like that, stamina, mana, all these things, all these variables that make each fight feel a bit more unique. As you can see, as I'm running around and exploring the world, you can see the world feels quite nice. Like the graphics are nice, they're pleasant, they're not over the top, um, so it won't kill your frame rate, but they're not like crap looking either. They look quite pleasant on the eyes. You know, the trees look nice, they move around in the wind, the cliffs in the distance look good, it makes you want to climb them. And even the smoke from the campfires and all these the fog, the weather effects, all these things just make it feel nice to be around. And as the daytime changes, like you'll notice distinct differences between morning, afternoon, evening, and whatnot. Uh, every now and then someone will lay down a campfire or build a structure. And you can actually contribute some of your materials to help them build it, just like in a game like The Forest, for example, or Valheim even. So if you like those survival sandboxy games, this game actually has a lot of those elements in it, where you go out and you gather resources and you can use those to craft and build things. And I find that really cool. Not only you just build your own things, but other players can contribute to the building as well. Now through the town, you can see the town, the ambience, the lighting, all looks really nice. It looks real homey, like especially as I run into this town hall just here. And look at this inn, how beautiful is this inn? It's got a little moon on it, and uh, this is basically where you set your hearthstone sort of thing, like you do in WoW, and you can teleport back here. Now there's not really many fast travel options in the game, there's no mounts or anything, so there's a lot of running around, um, however you can have your teleported uh, hearthstone-like thing in the game, and it's got a one hour cooldown I believe. You can just go to any inn in the game and set it wherever you want. Now here is the uh, auction house, so to speak, or they call it the trading post. And uh, yeah, here you can buy stuff or you can sell stuff. So here I'm placing a sell order. You can see the unit price. You can change the price to whatever you want since it's just something that's pretty easy to get. I'm going to make it a nice low price. And then, yeah, and simple as that. You put that up. Now once you've made yourself a little pickaxe, you can equip the pickaxe and a sithle and a skinning knife all at the same time, so you don't have to switch between them. And, uh, and yeah, you just find a boulder and start whacking away, or you find a tree and start chopping it down. Well, you know, you kill a boar and you start skinning. It's great. You get stone, you get wood, you get skins like pelts, hides, whatnot. You just got to make sure you got it equipped, and you can just craft these at the campfire, and some, sometimes you get them as a quest reward, but you can dismantle these as well. Now here we actually go to a tanning rack, and we turn our skins into uh, into coarse leather. And you can craft them all at once, like there's, there's no waiting around crafting one by one in this game, it's nice. You can just, cool, I want to craft in bulk, all at once, done, cool. Done in five seconds, it's great. Now you can purchase your own player housing too, so if you're one of those people who loves player housing, yep, that's in the game. So, I haven't bought it yet, but nice to know it's there. Now here we got the stone cutting table, so here we can turn all our stone into stone blocks, and we can craft things from those stone blocks. Here you got your wood shop tier 3, this is where you can uh, craft wood. Now, as more and more people level up in the game, these uh, workstations upgrade as well, and you can build more advanced things. Here we've got a smelter. This is where we chuck our ingots in, our ore that we get, and uh, yeah, they spit out the ingots. So uh, for those Valheim players, we'll recognize the smelter. And then you go over to the forge, and then you can finally craft some gear. And yeah, look, look at all the different weapons you can craft. You can craft axes. Spears. Let's gonna we'll craft this sword. Oh, look at that! Nice uncommon iron longsword. This is my first 
uncommon item and it feels so good crafting that myself. It feels so rewarding that I've gone out, gathered these resources and crafted my own cool sword and it happens to be more powerful than the other swords I've picked up from running around and questing. Now, if you salvage items, it's kind of the same as vendor trashing. You'll usually get like some uh, materials that can help you repair gear and uh, the more valuable the item is, um, the more gold you'll get for it as well. Now, you do have a, like a soulbound system in this game and uh, you can like just salvage those, but you can't trade it. But a lot of things, if you don't equip it, you can trade. Now look at these trees falling over. Like the world just feels so cool how you can just change the terrain at your will around you. And of course these trees grow back and rocks respawn. Anyways guys, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe and comment if you want a chance at that beta key. I'll release it uh, just before the weekend so that uh, you, you still have plenty of time to play the beta. And if you're the, one of the few comments in there, yeah, chances are pretty good since I don't get too many views on this channel. And uh, appreciate you watching this far into the video guys. That's, uh, let me know what you think of New World and see if it interests you or not. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.